Welcome to Voices for Impact, the podcast. Started during the COVID-19 pandemic and made in Syracuse, Voices for Impact is full of conversations with thought leaders from around the world that have made significant accomplishments in their lives and have gone through their own challenges, but have made it through those adversities and made positive impacts through their work. I'm your host, Danielle Mensing, and as a fundraiser for a nonprofit, I believe the most valuable tool you can give yourself is making a positive impact on others and your community. Every conversation is going to give you tools and tactics from entrepreneurs, athletes, artists, and change makers that will encourage you to develop a growth mindset and reimagine how you can find your purpose. Now let's get started. Welcome to another episode of Voices for Impact. My name is Danielle Mensing, founder of Voices for Impact. And today I am chatting with David Rock, the man simply known as D Rock, has worked as a video editor for Gary Vaynerchuk since 2014. As one of the longest tenured members of the now 25 plus person team, Gary, D Rock filmed and edited the very first episode of hashtag AskGaryV and hundreds more from there. While he's always either behind the camera or in the editing bay, you'll often see him alongside Gary in 30 plus countries a year, traveling the globe and recording all the detail of what takes place on Gary's entrepreneurial adventures. Prior to his time at VaynerMedia, DRock worked as a series at a, on a series of independent films and television shows, including Royal Pains, The Carrie Diaries, and A Case of You. So say hello to him on Twitter at DavidRockNYC or follow the journey on Instagram at D Rock. Thank you so much for having a conversation with me today. Of course. I'm honored. Thank you so much for having me. I'm honored. Thank you. Um, so let's go back to baby D Rock when you were growing <laughs> up. <laughs> what uh, started your passion for creating and filming? Where did that come from? Yeah, I mean, honestly, um, and thank you again for having me. This is really nice. And honestly, my mom would love that uh, intro. Um, and honestly, my mom was a big uh, driver of my creativity. She would always like, I was homeschooled. So like we were drawing, we were writing, we were doing playing music. We were like, she was like, anything that you want to be creatively, you should try. And so like, I played five different instruments. I like was writing like a fantasy novel. I drew all the time. Um, and honestly, I think I was like somewhat average at most things, but when I, my nephew, so I have three sisters, two older, one younger. Okay. My oldest sister had her first child, uh, Joseph, and he um, was born when I was like 11 years old. And I remember uh, she had bought this like home video camera. And okay. that's when I started playing around with a camera for the first time. I was like, wow, this is so much fun. Like I would just like run around and shoot right. him like playing with the Thomas Tank engine train and like just playing with him yeah. and also like filming. And then eventually I stole the camera and <laughs> took it home. Um, well, I, I borrowed it, but I, I technically stole it um, and brought it home and started filming with my friends in the backyard um, and my younger sister. And we would like shoot all these like adventure films in the backyard. And then what I ended up learning was that you could edit videos. Yeah. I was like, wait a minute, this is so cool. So then I got obsessed. YouTube came out and I started like just downloading a bunch of different random videos and editing them together. And then also um, we just watched tutorials and kind of taught myself how to edit via tutorials on uh, YouTube. And then just kind of fell in love with it, you know? Yeah, that is so um, amazing. And so your creative mind, you were from a young age, all into different um, arts and music. Um, and so fast forward, you took a chance in um, providing a free service to Gary V. And then that yeah. turned into a full time job. Could you explain a little bit about that? Yeah, so at the time, my buddy and I were doing a podcast called the Launching Creative Podcast, uh, my buddy Nick Parks. And uh, we used to literally like live across the street. It was wild um, back in Queens, Australia. And I started like, we started interviewing a ton of entrepreneurs and businessmen. And they were all like very professional, you know, suit and tie, 
very like vanilla in my opinion. And then my buddy was like, hey, there's this guy talking at Columbia University. I think we should go listen to him. Uh, it was late at night. This guy walks out on stage in jeans, Nikes, and a hoodie with a hat on. And I'm like, this guy is different than what I've seen uh, lately. And I kind of just fell in love with Gary's energy that night um, and reached out to him and said, hey, I'd love to make a free video. I was trying to figure out how to get him on the podcast. Yeah. He had just come out with jab, 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 right hook, which was give, 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 and then ask. Um, and so I was like, let me just try his method. I emailed him. I DM'd him. I messaged him. I did everything I possibly could. No response. Wow. And then one of my, I, I remember this like a few years ago and I'm like, wow, that's so wild. Um, I was freelancing at the time and I had made the most money I'd ever made on a video shoot. Okay. And so I, it was pouring rain in the city and I'm ghetto. Like I would carry my lighting, my gear, like I would just like carry everything. I went like the hunchback back of Notre Dame with I, like five yeah. other legs. Oh, and I had so many random things on me, lighting, tripods, cameras, mics, everything. And I would just like go through the subway system because oh I had no money. Um, and so this day I had made the most money I'd ever made. It was pouring rain. And I was like, let me just take a cab. Mind you, I had, I had taken like one other cab that like my ex-girlfriend's aunt had paid for like years <laughs> before. So like I had never taken a cab. I didn't know what the hell I was doing, but I was like, let me go outside and like the movies, just put my hand up and grab one, yeah. grab the cab, went over the bridge and Gary tweeted out, hey, I'm trying this app out called Kick. K-I-K. It's like a messaging app back in the day. Um, it's like Gary, if he said, hey, I'm trying out TikTok or yeah. you can look into NFT. Like it was so just like a thing. Um, had service because I was above ground. Now I went to the app, made a username, I am him message like instantly. And then he said yes uh, to me following him around for a day. Followed him around for a day, made a video. I, by the way, like, I don't know how it came together, but he didn't want to wear a mic. He didn't want to like capture great audio, but we were, he was writing this article in the back of the car and how he writes is he talks into a mic, yeah. into a little voice, like iPhone or whatever. Yeah. And whoever was interviewing Steve Unwin about the article gave me the narrative I needed for the short film, uh, Clouds and Dirt. Made the film, a month later, he messages me, I'm in the middle of like a 72 hour film festival thing. So I'm already up 52 hours. Yeah. My eyes are bugging out. I'm like working on this huge film project and Gary messages me back in the day. And I remember this because back in the day you would have your notifications on when you got new emails. Um, like now I don't, but like it went ding, 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 ding. Like a big loud notification. And it was Gary V at like 11 PM saying hey dot 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 you want to come work for me and that was kind of it i didn't i didn't see myself working for him um but i took the, the leap and did it oh my and i'm God. glad i did he's, he's a good guy you know <laughs> yeah and um, what a crazy story you took the cab for once because it was pouring rain you probably didn't want to ruin your equi equipment i was just like done with it i was like done with the day i was like i made an extra 50 bucks today let me just <laughs> treat myself to a cab ride oh my gosh that is an amazing story and really just shows the hustle also uh and and the passion that you have for your craft but um the hard work ethic that you also have and the yeah I, I often say hard, yeah i often say hard work and serendipity play a, a big uh role in fate like yeah. people think that if you wish it to happen or if something or if like you say it it will happen I often think that hard work gets you to the place where the good serendipitous thing happen, and that's the crescendo moment, you know? Yeah, good point. I think that's very true. You can manifest as much as you want and say it out loud, but there's got to be action behind it. Um, yeah. yeah, I've never heard it explained that way, and that's, that's a really good way to put it. Um, what advice would you give to aspiring content creators, somebody that was, you know, in your position, 10 years ago, but they're in that position now, what would you say to them? Yeah, it's funny, like, this is the greatest time, I think, to ever be a content creator. I think it's in your face, no matter where we are, like, you got to remember back, 
when I first started with Gary, Instagram wasn't what it is. It was just photos where you put filters on and like, it was like YouTube and Facebook that we were mostly focusing on for video creation and content. But now like every platform has like TikTok, Snapchat, LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube. So what I would used to do in the back in the day was I was on Craigslist every single day, posting ads, marketing myself. Hey, do you need a Kickstarter video? Hey, do you need a wedding video? Hey, do you need an editor in New York City? Hey, do you need an editor and a videographer in New York City? I would make so many different ads and post like three or four of them a day because you were allowed to like post and then later on you were able to renew so like that kind of thing. And so what I would do if you were a content creator today is make visual ads like in stories or in um in like just article like make an article about who you are what you do like you got to advertise yourself and i think too many people are using their uh social as portfolios Mm -hmm. not so much pushing their work you know so whether that be you make a separate account for your business and just push out videos or you run ads or anything i think that's a good way to start you know yeah yeah and then for me like I did I I knew I wasn't the person who wanted to be on camera I knew I wanted to follow someone around it was my craft I wanted to document I wanted to like make the story so being self-aware kind of of who you are as well as a content creator um could be a good place to start because you don't there's so many jobs that don't require you to be the front person yeah Right. There's so many jobs in content creation or any industry now where you can kind of do a role that is not needing to be the front and center all the time. And I think too many people think, oh, but if I want to get into content creation, I need to be the person on camera. Mm -hmm. No, find your best friend, Sally, who like might actually be charismatic and you make the story about her. And that kind of like that helped me. And I I think a lot of people got to channel that, you know. Yeah, no, I definitely understand what you're saying. And I think it's hard because you see people right in the, in the screen and you're like, okay, that's cause that's what, you know, that's what you see, right. Right. but you don't necessarily know all of the people and players that go into the background of making something happen, like an editor, uh, to make it something, uh, a masterpiece. And mm-hmm. so thinking about those other roles that you could do, um, very good points. What is one challenge that you've overcome and how did you get through that adversity? Uh, I'm going to make it more relevant to the conversation in terms of like creative. Yeah. I think a lot of times when I, before Gary, I would, I would take a while to like edit projects out because I would only want it to be perfect. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, <laughs> Gary has broken me. Uh, he, we now create 150, 200 pieces of content a day as like a unit. And I think that only comes from understanding that you're one piece of content away from changing your life. And the more volume that you get out there, the more different ways you say things and the different nuances of how you approach content is actually the magic sauce. Yeah. Now I would say like if you're like if you're like a DP who like loves the art of it, then I would say you got to go deep down that. But I would say try to find other things that you can then do a little bit faster. So I think becoming faster, making quicker decisions uh, in your creative process, because a lot of times I I I'm I'm a uh, I'm a victim of, not a victim I'm a uh, I'm someone who's done this a lot. I have so many video projects that are just dead on my desktop mm-hmm. that like or hard drive that'll never ever see the day of light. And for that, I'm sad because a lot of times you put so much creative energy into something, but then you never get it out and it never sees the world. And I think, you know, I'm, I'm more of someone who likes to see the draft version than the final product anyways. Um, and I think a lot of people do as well. Great advice. What do you think is a skill or characteristic about you uh, that you think has allowed you to reach this point of your life? Uh, patience. I think, you know, it's funny, me and Gary had a, a pretty great career talk right before, um, before Christmas. And he was like, hey, you know, I know this last year wasn't quite what you wanted in terms of like what I was working on, uh, the project I was assigned, um, et cetera. 
and he was like, but I just want you to know that you've worked so hard for so long that I want you to like think about what you want to do. That was never ever a conversation in the seven or eight years prior that I've been working with him. I think what because I, I've been patient, because I've been working hard, because I've been, you know, humble, because I've been in the things that like my mom and dad taught me, I think um, just a lot of that played into it, you know? And I think too many people give up right before the next thing is about to happen. And by the way, like, again, I've been in, I've, I've been in these shoes of like, do I stay at Vayner? Do I stay working with Gary? Like, what do I want to do? Yeah. I. I've had that talk with myself every single year for the last eight years yeah. because it's hard. It's hard to go through the process when you're in it. Um, and a lot of times, you know, people give up, but I think tenacity is important. Yeah. Tenacity and patience, you said. Um, and that is so hard. I think in this day and age when we want everything instantly and also you see, and I think Gary V's talked about this tons of times, like you see people, uh, the, the success where Gary V is now, you don't see Gary from 10, 15 years ago, or, you know, wine library and, and the work that it took to get him to where he is today. Um, yeah, I think it's hard. I'm, I'm definitely an impatient person. I wanted things two weeks ago. Yeah, Danielle, you know, to make this super meta, yeah, listen, I started with Gary eight years ago. We put out tons and tons of content. But before I met Gary, Gary had another show called Wine Library TV, and he put out a thousand episodes. Yeah. So, Danielle, in your world of like wanting everything tomorrow, this is a thousand episodes before I started eight years ago. That's five years of putting out content almost every single day. If you take that into account, yeah. patience is the only thing that will get you across the finish line because you got to put out sheer volume. Yeah. For a long time, like five, that's 12 years of putting out content consistently to get to where Gary is. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I think that's true. super important. Yeah, it is important. That's a good point. Um, what is the best lesson that you've learned from working with Gary Vee? Yeah, uh, life is long. I think, um, you know, I, 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 so the reason, the other part of the story of why I got into filmmaking and editing and like kind of like how I got here was on YouTube, there was a video that, of Will Smith. It was a mashup video. And it was like nine minutes of like Will Smith talk about success or something like that. Because I was homeschooled, uh, I had always liked listening to motivational things. I kind of gravitated towards that. And I always love Will Smith. Like I'm a big seven pound pursuit of happiness. Yeah. Everything that he's like done, I've like loved. But that video I watched almost every single day. And I always told myself, hey, if I can make a video like this and like someone's life will change, um, I could die a happy man. And I would say right now, if I died and I went to heaven, I'd be like, okay, I'm good because of how much content we put out. Yeah. But what else, what else I've learned is through the amount of content that we put out has changed so many people's lives along the way that like, and we're still playing the game. What you don't realize is like the intern kid that was like going through a problem that heard a Gary Vee video in 2015 now runs businesses, mm -hmm. now makes millions of dollars. Now also is like, or they just live a better, happier life because they now take the advice and like realize, oh wait, they're not the entrepreneur. They need to go work for somebody and now they're making a great salary. And like, there's so many different ways people have done it. And I've seen, so where, where that kind of comes into the story, I've seen the people like where, where like years ago we would just like DM and like talk, now doing something remarkable. And I've seen that play out over the eight years. And that's from content yep. and putting out good vibes and energy, right? Yeah. So I think that is the biggest lesson Gary taught me through osmosis of working with him, but also just kindness. Like he's super kind. He's super, if he's in a room with you or he's talking to you, he's there in that moment. And I think I'm working on doing that a lot better. But I think that's another important one that a lot of people don't talk about, about Gary is like, when he's having a conversation with you, he is in that conversation. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
um, really great points and and I just lost what I was going to say so I'm going to have to edit this out okay. but um <laughs> or keep it because it's good. <laughs> but I was, where, where Gary would be like no editing D-Rock no editing so many <laughs> light bulbs are going off and I'm overwhelmed by what you're saying but um as far as uh just just really good points and I'm in a tangent mood today too. Honestly, like I, I don't normally go on such long tangents, so I apologize, but that's completely me. <laughs> I love tangents because I get more information and uh, we get more, uh, yeah, content, right? Um, and so tell me a little bit about what drives you. I know you spoke about, of course, your passion for content creating and, and growing up and how you got in, interested in all of this, and, um, but what drives you to keep going? Yeah, it's, it's another it's a great question. Um, I, I love this. Thank you. Um, what drives me is like, I really just want it. Like, I think I, I've heard Gary say it too. And like, it really just resonates with me. Like, I just want to see if I can do it. Right. I come from nothing. I mean, I come from a great family. And I think that is also a good thing. But I also like come from nothing. And I think I want to see if I can build a legacy for my family um and yeah just want to i like creating if if today i'm creating gary v videos and tomorrow i'm editing v friends content and then we're working on hollywood films around the characters and like if all these things are playing out the way i see them playing out i will have done what i've set out to do which is like create story create content create characters um, I want to make in that Harry Potter or Hunger Games. I want to uh, put out a cartoon film like Pixar and like tell that like change like a young kid's life. Like I want that stuff. So I think that just the sheer need and desire of like wanting to see how big we 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 can go, you know. Yeah, and now I remember what I was gonna say from the previous question. Yeah. But yeah. just kind of piggybacking on what you were saying about the motivational videos you would watch and the one ha happens to be Will Smith, but I so resonate with that because especially during when the pandemic first started, I would just go through YouTube and listen to those like mashup motivational, motivational uh -huh. videos. And <laughs> yeah. I didn't, you know, I know they're on there and I see that the they have like a hundred thousand views, but you know, to really know that other people are doing that <laughs> along with me is and it's so helpful. And that does go back to the content that you're creating with Gary Vee and how that does help people. Um they started at one point, but they listened to a piece of your content and they're now at this point and, and succeeding in life. And, and, and that just gave them another perspective of where they were in their life to give them the extra push. So it's crazy yeah. how a little piece of content like that and just listening to it. And it could be Gary Vee, it could be Will Smith, whoever um, really can help, help people. Um, so yeah. on, on that, I think a lot of people when are they're going or facing with a hard time they either go insular and shut themselves away or they go surround themselves with other friends that are complaining and i think you know the one thing that um i've done i i'm you gotta understand I, i've been filming and editing gary literally almost every day of my life for like the last seven years and so with that come like i hear the stuff all the time i'm like I'm a product of listening to positive content all the time. I think what a lot of what a lot of people should do is audit and, and so I'm sorry. So what ended up happening was I would always experiment with myself. Hey, you know, Gary, hey, hey, you know, you gotta like be cautious of who you surround yourself with. Well then I would audit myself. Wait, who am I hanging out with? What am I spending my time on? Hey, you know, like you're if you're feeling negative, you can go listen to positive shit. Like I'm experimenting on myself for the last eight years. And I think the biggest one was the people who I was hanging out with. Mm -hmm. And I think it's hard because sometimes that person is very close to you, yeah. you know, and sometimes that person is just a random friend or a family member. Like you don't know, but I think one piece of advice I can give people is really audit who you're spending your time with and what you're spending your time on and how to catch yourself the next time you're about to complain and have a little bit of perspective yeah. on where we are in the world, right? Yeah, good points. And um, my last question to you is how do you find define success? 
Yeah, happiness. Um, <clears throat> I think if you if you are content, I think again, so many people back to your point about like seeing content. They need to be the person on the camera. They need to be the talent. They need to be the influencer. They need to be the person on YouTube making money. They need to buy the newest crypto thing. Honestly, if you can find the thing that if that makes you happy, do that and do that for a long time until uh, something good happens. Yeah, great, yeah. great piece of advice. And I know you have a side project called um, Made By. Do you want to talk about that or touch on um, any yeah. next yeah. projects going on with that? Yeah, I, uh, you know, a while ago, like probably five years ago, I had like tweeted out, hey, I want to make a hoodie. Can someone help me? Um, this guy, guy um, Syed from Canada, uh, Wild Hood Clothing reached out to me, put out a bunch of like motivational hoodies, probably like four or five. I loved it. It was fun. I think we made like really cool projects. Like people love them. They're comfortable and there's motivational sayings on them. But I realized I wanted to start getting more into like fashion. And I realized that like Virgil Abloh, who did Off-White, um, Rest in Peace, I got very inspired by him because he came at design with such an approach of like what we do for video on like Instagram. It was, it showed the process. It broke down design. It showed you like kind of like how, how he thought about it. Like him writing like laces on laces was so out there, but also like the simplest thing that you could do. And I think that really inspired me, especially with like, and so then now what I'm doing made by is I'm designing something every single day, 20 minutes a day or 10 minutes a day, putting it out there. I'm going to, and then also I, I worked on a big documentary for people um, with my partner, Nima. Um, him and I put that out in October, I think of last year. Um, kind of like the whole breakdown of how he got to his success of selling the $69 million piece of art. He had designed something for 15 years straight. Wow. Remember how we talked about Gary yeah. and like the podcast for 10 years or five years and then eight years? Beatma designed a graphic every single day for 15 years. Like he like literally still does it now. Like still goes home before midnight, post something on Tumblr and then post it on, on Instagram. 15 years is not a long time for me. If, if I thought about the eight that I put in already with Gary, mm -hmm. another 15, I'm only 45. You know, I think that is still young and a baby. If I can get to a point where I'm putting out a design every day and I built up a body of work, something good is bound to happen. And I think too many people overthink that part and don't just want to put in the work. And so Made By for me is like the beginning journey of, I think, my fashion uh, passion. Mm -hmm. Fashion passion. I like it. Um, and then also like, yes, me creating, right? Like, who knows if a, a brand will be like, hey, why don't you just design for the metaverse? And made by is like a metaverse fashion brand, or maybe it's LVMH. They just invested in uh, Amelie on Dior. Maybe uh, they do that for me as well. Like, who knows? And I think, again, I, I love if you go on my Instagram or like, again, this crazy concept of like, if even Spielberg, if I can go, back and he had an Instagram and he documented his process of how like back in the day like when he made ET and Star Wars and he like posted a selfie and like wrote about his journey I would love that content so yeah. much and even right now for Virgil Virgil was a young guy and he passed away he put out a lot of more content than Steven Spielberg obviously because he had the means but he still didn't show us enough like he really didn't write like I'm depressed or I'm sad or he didn't show us when he got hurt like I really want people to like watch the process and I think it'll be cool for people to go back and look if made by becomes a big brand True. hey this is how it kind of started yeah you know like I think documenting the journey is um fun yeah and, I, and I, important I, I, for I future think. generations of creators and yeah, just like put it out there. Like yeah. again, the Will Smith video motivated me to like go do the thing I want to do. You don't know what's gonna motivate someone else. Love it. Oh my gosh. Well, thank you so much for giving us insight into what you do. And thank you so much to our viewers for watching. Voices for Impact is on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. 
and all the podcast platforms. So please like, and subscribe. And I will see you next time on Voices for Impact. Thank you again so much, D-Rock. Thank you for having me. And yes, subscribe, please. That'd be awesome.